Chopping Up Stockers and Zach the Stock Cropper coming to you. Happy Father's Day morning on Sunday, June. What day is it today? Probably 20th, 21st. 20th. Oh, it's the 21st. Yeah, the summer solstice. Beautiful Sunday morning here in the northern hinterlands of Iowa. And uh, it's been a really, really fun week here at the uh, barn. Wanted to come out and uh, shoot some content, bring everybody up to speed on some of the changes we made since our barn unveil. We've added some more features to the barn and uh, had our first uh, thunderstorm event. was able to utilize the uh, our uh, self-filling uh, water system with our inverse roof design. So wanted to show everybody uh, kind of what we learned and what we did this week here. So it's been a glorious week. We uh, <coughs> had our first uh, rainfall uh, I don't know, two or three nights ago, and some of you on Twitter saw some of the video that we shot um, shooting from the inside of the barn during a thunderstorm, celebrating our rainfall collection system uh, working for the first time. And uh, so I wanted to show some of the things that changed on the, on the barn since last week. You can see the pigs are out this morning, and, uh, you know, they've had uh, <clears throat> over two inches of rain on this uh, since I think it was Wednesday or Thursday night. And... Um, really surprised they haven't rutted and destroyed things up uh, too bad at all. There really is hardly any rutting, uh, which is a little bit surprising. We've considered having to ring the pigs, but we wanted to see what happened first before we we did that, and uh, so far so good. But <coughs> a couple things, um, uh, Juice, why don't you hop in the barn here and, and show some of these features. So uh, a quick introduction. This is uh, one of the most important people uh, on this project. He's the man behind the scenes. This is my operations manager, uh, Jordan Newton, and he goes by the name Juice. If you want to follow him on Twitter, he's Juice Newton 62. But uh, all the craftsmanship, a lot of the, uh, the things that have been constructed on here has been uh, been his handiwork. So. Uh, uh, Juice, why don't you show the uh, the folks some of the panels and how they work for, uh, or just uh, fold those down. So we wanted to, you know, last week when we had the barn, it was just this open front like this. We didn't have anything to really keep rain out. So we wanted to put the ability to uh, limit weather from getting into the barn a little bit more. So Juice made some of these panels that would uh, hinge down in place and lock, and that we would still have airflow um, to be able to get, you know, uh, into into the pan also gives us some shade when uh, uh, you know when we have really hot weather so it's a constantly a really nice uh, temperate climate inside the uh, the barn here so but yeah so <clears throat> the ones on the outside uh, go out and then this one rolls down so worked really really well with the rainfall event that we had last week so the other thing, the other key cog that was not on the uh, barn last week is uh, when we debuted, we did not have the ability to move the barn. And uh, I think it was Tuesday night we went out and um, this was the uh, cherry on the top uh, of the, the whole piece. So we took uh, an old uh, wheel off of a spray trailer that we had sitting around and uh, did some machine work. and built this apparatus with a turnbuckle in front so that we're able to steer and elevate the pin um, as we advance it uh, through the field. And we're actually going to uh, shoot the advan advancement process and show you that here shortly on how you do it. But um, we didn't know <clears throat> exactly how this was going to work when we, uh, uh, when we put it together, but uh, this thing really makes the pen mobile um, so that you can effectively steer it with uh, just having one person on the back uh, of the pen as the pen advances and make sure that it's going down uh, right next to our corn row. So we've got a really tight tolerance there, so it's important to be, have the ability to uh, do that. And Sheldon's design on uh, on this steering apparatus in front and elevation piece is, was absolutely fantastic. So, um, but that's uh, those are the the features that we've added, and you know uh, the other thing I guess I'd show if you didn't see our video the other night, we added uh, in the rainfall uh, collection system. We finished the plumbing on that, so if you can see the top plumbing there, that's two inch plumbing that goes up to a gutter that is attached to the center of our inverse roof, 
And so we caught, uh, we've, we caught a, about an inch rain. Uh, the first shot came through and then we got about another oh, nine tenths to another inch later that night. And what that allowed us to do was that roof uh, collected the water, it fil fil or, uh, ran down into our gutter system and filled the pen up or filled the, uh, the, wa the water tanks in the pen up. We probably gained about, uh, probably about 50 gallons of water that night and then um, filled it up to the point even within that first inch that it hit our overflow. And so we had rainfall shooting out our overflow uh, run here and was watering <clears throat> our outside row of our inner crop corn, which we've got planted at about uh, 60,000 uh, plants per acre. So it needs all the water it can get to, uh, to fill, hopefully what we're gonna grow there. But um, so a beautiful morning, corn's growing, the additional pasture looks great, the oats are heading out, uh, all the animals are doing great. Um, chickens look absolutely fantastic. We added uh, this apron netting around the outside of our chicken tractors this week and that allowed um, we had a lot of people saying oh you're gonna lose all your chickens to predators blah 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 and we're like well we'll put a apron netting around the outside to hopefully avoid that so we've had uh, zero predator activity we got some game cams up uh, just in case to, to know if something does come in and screw with us at all but uh, this has been an unbelievably uh, really smooth first week of operation and it's uh, just kind of gets more fun each day so i think what we're going to do now is uh it's that time of the morning um we need to get back to our families here so we're going to advance the pen and we're going to show you just how we do that not only is juice a uh, a great fabricator of things uh, the animals love him and uh, the pigs want to to be with him all the time right juice yep. <laughs> so juice is going to move uh move the pigs in here. So when we move the barn, um, the idea is that uh, we want to have all the animals enclosed up on our piggy pad suspended floor. So I haven't talked about that, but the, the barn has a raised floor so the animals can be off the ground, out of the mud if need be in inclement weather. So if it got too muddy or they were rutting stuff up uh, in the mud, we could shut them up and they'd still have access to feed and water in here. So Jordan's going to uh, to move the pigs in, and then we've got our cute little barn door that will uh, allow them to uh, to be shut in. So sheep took themselves in, and the goats. So we close them up, and then one of the beautiful features of this pen is that we don't want to mash our pasture down when we advance the thing. So we have this pen pinned, so that we pull a couple pins. And uh, Hercules Juice Newton flips the uh, the pen up. Oop, hold on. Just about lost my finger there. There we go. And so now the pen uh, is able to move and ready to move through the pasture. So the way that we advance this thing is with um, a winch that we have uh, on a classic case tractor located at the end of the strip and I'm going to take you down and uh, show you that setup here So about 300 feet down that way is uh, the mobile barn and uh, <clears throat> We wanted to have a way to move this thing so that uh, the pasture was not run down You know the easiest way would have been to hook it up with just to a you know a, a tractor or something and drag the barn through this first year for the, the test experiment, but <clears throat> instead what we did is we had the uh, my dad's old tractors that we just had sitting in the shed that we really don't use anymore. This glorious 2590 case that I grew up uh, doing a lot of stuff in. And, uh, you know, when you're on a budget and you're trying to figure out how to experiment, you just make do with what you have. And so I had this winch on my Montag uh, fertilizer cart for strip tail that I didn't use uh, anymore with in Hydrus. And so we ripped that off of the Montag and... Uh, Juice Newton uh, fabricated a, a hitch mount to go on the drawbar, and uh, we made this little battery mount, so we've got battery power here, and Juice has got the switch, and it's as easy as hitting the button. Hit it. So we got the winch tight, and uh, it's time to move. So just to 
reiterate again, uh, we use these turnbuckles that Sheldon designed into our carrying apparatus. We just elevate the pan off the ground about two or three inches. And when we're ready to move, I'm gonna go back here and stand so I can provide a little bit of a steering assist if need be. Set my coffee down here. And I'll throw the hammer. And we're moving. Just like that. Pigs have new pasture in the back. Got some oats to chow on. Fresh pasture in front. Now all we've got to do is let the winch down and uh, Jordan will come back and we'll let uh, the pens down and the animals out. This is the best part. It's every time we move, it's like Christmas for them. They come out and want to munch on the oats. Slow parade of progress. Finding the new goodies for the morning. And the one thing I haven't mentioned before is the chickens trail behind for a very specific purpose. So, uh, you know, the whole idea is that we've got livestock out here, they're crapping, we've got flies. Flies are going to lay eggs in the larva. Um, from my reading and research this winter, they say you want to have chickens trail behind because. The fly larva will hatch in uh, two to three days time after uh, the animal manure has been laid down and uh, the eggs have been laid and so that's why the chickens are spaced where they are. So they're going to move at this increment behind about uh, uh, three barn days of movement so you can see the, the, the difference there, the three days of move um, in pasture and uh, they're just going to trail behind and uh, finish things off and eat fly larva and be our finishing basket on the system. Juice is back down, he's gonna flip the pen. Get some slack into the winch. Pivot it down. And let the sheet back out. go to work. So there you have it. That is uh, kind of the details of the actual true fallen veil of the system and how it all works. And uh, it's been an unbelievable week. Um, <laughs> on Tuesday, I think it was, Jason Mock uh, called me out in Indiana. Uh, and asked me to come out and speak at his field day about uh, the system that we've created, which uh, absolutely blew my mind. And uh, but I am unbelievably pumped to, to tell everyone that I will be heading to Gaston, Indy, uh, Indiana, on Thursday night, Friday morning, and uh, unbelievably pleased to be asked to be one of the speakers at his Constant Canopy field day out there. So. If you want to uh, see or learn more about the project, I'm going to be presenting out there here next Friday. Um, I think uh, I think the event starts at one o'clock, and uh, if you folks want to sign up, uh, go check out uh, Jason's website, constantcanopy.com, and I think there's an Eventbrite RSVP thing to uh, to let them know you're coming. But uh, uh, it's been a crazy week with this project, and uh, we've learned a lot already, and we're looking forward uh, more to what's to come and uh, Really looking forward to, uh, to meeting and sharing uh, our experiences with more people um, out east later this week. So that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Everybody have a happy Father's Day. Take care.